Are you ready, Lily? Are you gonna fall asleep so Mama can film? What happens in Fight Club gets talked about on YouTube. Hello everybody, welcome here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about Fight Club. In my last Q&A, I had mentioned that I was planning on filming a Fight Club video where I was going to talk about how Eli and I fight. <laughs> some of the rules that we have, the goals that we have, how we deal with conflict, and I am finally sitting down and filming it for you. I also want to start off this video letting you guys know that my birth story is coming. The portion of me talking about my birth story is actually filmed. However, that video is being sponsored by a super cool company, and because of just how things are crazy in the world right now, there are a lot of things delayed. So that video is not getting posted yet, but it is coming, it will be posted eventually just need to be patient and wait a little bit longer so back to Fight Club what's the number one rule of Fight Club we don't talk about Fight Club but today I'm gonna talk about Fight Club I should probably say that Eli and I actually don't fight for those of you who are new here Eli and I have been married for five and a half years so obviously I don't have like 25 years of experience in marriage and I don't have like a marital psychology degree where I counsel marriage couples I don't have any of that but what I do have is I think a pretty good foundation and ability to handle conflict or I should say Eli and I do with each other <laughs> we're not incredible at knowing how to deal with conflict with everyone else in the world but we're pretty good at handling conflict with each other and that's really the most important thing so Eli and I pretty much never fight we are not fighting people we don't enjoy fights we don't thrive off of them, we hate the drama. So we don't fight a lot, we fight very, very rarely. However, we do have disagreements and differences of opinion. We're two completely different people. We are so opposite. Like sometimes we look at each other and we go, like why did we love each other? Why do we love each other? Because honestly, you are a completely different person than I <laughs> And And he looks at me and goes, I married you for your body. And I'm like, I know that sunlight bathing in hold up we don't have an insane amount of things in common we both have completely different upbringing sometimes we have different ideas as to what to do with parenting so we can very easily have differing opinions and have disagreements but those never turn into fights they never turn into big arguments and that is ultimately the goal we don't want to get in a fight so fight club is more like how do we not be a part of Fight Club. I'm going to apologize right now for the mix-up in light for this video. <laughs> the clouds are coming in and out and the sun is shining and I'm thriving off of it but it's not great for, here we go, here comes the sunlight. It's not great for video quality but this is how it is. I may say some things in this video that may be offensive but I'm just giving it to you how I see it. A big reason why Eli and I don't fight and we like knowing how to resolve conflict and we are active in that is because we don't like drama. There are there are couples in this world who love drama, who love to create drama, who love to build on top of drama, who love to put fire on top of drama, ignore Lily's grunting, or listen to it because it's really cute. Those are the relationships that are romanticized in Hollywood and those are not the ones that that do all that great. They aren't fun. When you actually think about it, like sure, maybe the media is able to paint them in this picture of being attractive and desirable, but in real life, that's exhausting. That's stressful, that's not fun. So let's just not enjoy drama. This is not high school. This is a marriage. This is maturity. This is real life. Let's act like adults. So when Eli and I are in a disagreement, we're not yelling at each other. We're not throwing things in each other's faces. We sit down like adults. We use good wording like adults and we act like adults. <laughs> marriage isn't easy. I'm I'm not pretending to say that it's easy and that it doesn't take work because it does because you're taking two completely different people and you are sticking them together as my father has given the analogy before marriage is basically taking two people putting them in a room with no doors no windows or anything and there's a fire and what are you gonna do you can't get out so you need to put the fire out and that is what conflict resolution is and after five and a half years of marriage Eli and I have kind of figured out how to resolve conflict conflict with each other. Communication is honestly like number one and I know everyone says that communication is key but it really really is. If I don't communicate to Eli that there is something bothering me and I just let it 
fester and I don't tell him and I don't come to him with that, it's gonna fester and other things are gonna happen and those things are gonna fester and then eventually I'm just gonna blow up. This has happened before and it never goes well because I'm left annoyed and frustrated for a long time and Eli has no idea at all. And next thing he knows is he says one thing and I lose it. When you let those things fester, it's, it's so easy for everything to snap in one second by one comment that's really harmless and innocent. Right away when something happens that bothers you, communicate and communication is not yelling that's not communication communication is hey honey um you know what you made a comment the other day about the dinner that i made you and i know you didn't mean for it to sound rude but I was kind of offended by it. And I know you might think that that's crazy that I feel offended by that, but I do. So let's refrain from using the words disgusting anymore. If I approach him with punches swinging, of course he's gonna get defensive and vice versa. But if I come to him in love and kindness and just clear word and calm, it would make no sense for him to then come out with his punches swinging because I'm coming to him nicely. <laughs> He's going to most likely react in the same way and be like, oh, you know, honey, I'm so sorry I didn't mean to use the word disgusting. I meant delightful. So let's make that dinner again. Another way to communicate well with your spouse is to know when to communicate with them. For me, I tend to communicate best at night right before I go to sleep. <laughs> it's like jumping into bed and spewing words. I don't know why that tends to be when I communicate best. Eli doesn't have a specific time when he communicates best. I have asked him when is the best time to talk to you about anything that I may have an issue with and he really doesn't know. But what he does know is he's not a fan of communicating right when we're getting into bed. <laughs> so I try to do my best to not communicate with him right before we get into bed, but he also knows that he could very easily communicate with me as we're jumping into bed. By having that conversation with your significant other, you can kind of find out when a good time is to communicate with them or a bad time. Because there might be a time that you are constantly communicating with them at that they can't stand and that's making the entire communication worse. Communication is just huge. Mature communication act like an adult. I know, I know. Are you tired and a little bit gassy maybe? Communication is the best way to prevent conflict, it's the best way to handle conflict, and to get out of conflict faster. But now I'm going to tell you guys our actual rules. Yes, we have actual rules when it comes to conflict and having a disagreement or an argument. Number one, no violence. This isn't even a rule that we had to work on um, where we were slamming fists and such and went, okay, maybe we should make it a rule to have no violence. We're just not violent people. I believe that throwing fists on tables or hitting walls or throwing things shows a real lack of maturity and self-control and that can be really dangerous and you never want to make the other person that you're with feel as though they're in danger in some way shape or form because you're throwing things across the room. That's not going to help with conflict at all. Again, those are those drama relationships that Hollywood loves to just romanticize and make young girls and young men think that that's what they want because it's hot or something. It's not. It's unhealthy and abusive. No violence. Next rule is do not bring up the past. When there have been past wrongs that either of us have done to the other person, whether it be something that we said or something that we did, we always ask for forgiveness in the end. So Eli's not going to bring up in a disagreement that we're having, he's not going to bring up something that I have said or done in the past or a way in which I have acted that I have already asked forgiveness for. That's not how forgiveness works. When you have forgiven somebody of a wrong, you forgive it and you forget it. As Christians, that's what Jesus did on the cross for us. He died on the cross and forgave us of our sins and he doesn't constantly reach back and go, oh, Rachel, remember when you, remember when you did this? Yeah, that really sucked. He doesn't do that. He has forgiven me of my sin and he has forgotten them. And in his eyes, I am clean of sin. Like I'm washed clean of that. That's how forgiveness works. 
we're not going to bring up past wrong. That's just immature and wrong and spiteful. And sometimes it's hard because you get kind of caught up in the argument and you're getting upset and you kind of want to give them a little stab of something. And you think, oh, I'll just bring this up that they did like three years ago. That was really bad. And I'm going to bring that up now. That isn't going to help the situation in any way, shape or form. Don't bring up the past. If you have forgiven that person in the past, do not bring it up. Another rule we have is do not walk away. I don't know how often that happens for other couples, but oh, nice burp. Oh, you're so cute. Oh my goodness, look at her face. Don't leave the room. If you're in the middle of a conversation, even if it's turning into an argument, you don't leave. Again, that is just another sign of immaturity and you won't be able to resolve any conflict if you leave the room. So don't leave the room. When Eli and I are having a disagreement, we deal with it. We don't run from conflict with each other. We want to fix it. And so we stay where we are and we talk about it. No name calling or swearing. We do not call each other names. Um, I don't call Eli a jerk. He doesn't call me a psychopath. We're thinking it, we're not saying it. I'm just kidding, we're, we're not actually. Again, that just shows lack of maturity. And swearing, it is unnecessary to swear. In incredible debates between two incredible debaters, you don't hear them swearing at each other. They are making their argument for from a educated, informative position. They are using clean words because they are so intelligent. They don't need to use a filler word to get a point across. They are aware that using swear words as filler words are only going to make them look less intelligent and that's not going to win them any kind of debate. So no name calling, no swearing. It is unnecessary and juvenile. Another rule we have is to just take a moment, take a step back and look at the situation from the other person's perspective. That can be a hard one, but it is very helpful when you stop and you kind of put yourself in the other person's shoes. When we think about it from the other person's point of view, it helps us to understand why they feel the way that they do, why their perspective is what it is, and uh, why they're opinionated in that way. And when we are aware of that side, it helps us to better communicate our side and why we have that differing opinion. So our last rule is kind of a, it sounds tacky because everyone says it, it's like that live, laugh, love thing, but I'm going to explain it a little bit differently. Our last rule is mama and papa do not go to bed angry with each other. That doesn't mean that we have to resolve the conflict right away. Sometimes, again, for me and my issue of wanting to talk about things right before bed, sometimes we'll talk about things in the evening after the kids have gone down to bed and we've been talking about it for a while and sharing with one another our opinions and we're having that disagreement. But you know what? We're tired. We have a newborn daughter. We have three other kids. Eli's got to go to work in the morning. He's had a long day. I have to be with the kids the next day. I've had a long day. We're both tired. And in that moment, probably the best thing we can do is get some sleep. But when people say, don't go to bed angry with each other, there's this idea that you have to resolve the conflict right then and there. That's not the case. Eli and I have done this before. This, this exact same scenario, we're having a disagreement, but we're both exhausted and we just want to go to sleep. We'll look at each other and go, let's just put this conversation on pause and deal with it tomorrow. If there's any pride in us, we'll swallow it and we will cuddle for a bit, we'll kiss for a bit, tell each other we love each other and we'll we'll go to sleep and we'll put that conversation on hold. And when we swallow pride and we do that, there's no anger. Like we may be having a disagreement, but that's okay. We'll deal with it tomorrow, but we're not angry at each other. We're not, you know, shoved over on our side of the bed to the very edge. I'm fake crying, trying to get his attention. He's not over on the other side, trying to pull the covers and pretending like he can't hear me. We don't do that. We put the conversation on hold and we pick it up again when we are both not tired or not as tired and have the time to give the situation the time that it needs in order to resolve the conflict. So we can go to bed in the midst of a disagreement, but that doesn't mean we have to go to bed angry and we don't wanna to go to bed angry. And is it always easy for me to swallow my pride in those moments? No, no, it is not always easy. Sometimes it's really, really difficult and I don't wanna swallow my pride and I wanna be angry and I, I 
want to be mad, but God is gracious and good and wakes me up from my pride and helps me to swallow my pride and put that conversation on hold until the next day. And honestly, every single time we have done this, when we pick up again the next day, the conflict is resolved so much quicker. Overall, in Fight Club, our goal is to get over the conflict, to resolve the conflict. We want to resolve the situation and we ultimately want to honor the Lord through our words and our actions and our thoughts while we are resolving the situation, the conflict. I want to act in a way that is glorifying to the Lord and what is resolving conflict going to do if the conflict was resolved after a whole lot of nasty actions and words spoken. Neither one of us enjoy fighting. We don't like the drama, we don't like the conflict. We wanna resolve it because we are, at the end of the day, even though we're completely opposite, he is my ultimate favorite person on this earth and I am his, he, I better be. <laughs> but that is everything guys. Nice, simple video. Hopefully it'll end up being short. <laughs> I would love to hear some of your guys' Fight Club rules. So feel free to comment those down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was insightful for you or just informative or gave you some good ideas. And I wanna say Eli and I are not perfect. We are still learning how to manage conflict with one another. If you have not already, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button that like button and I will see you guys in my next video.